I am so glad you all are here. This character is a family favorite. From the Nightmare Before Christmas, I give you Oogie Boogie. Now, if you don't know Oogie Boogie, he is a, a boogeyman. A large sack full of bugs and creepy crawlies. And here he is on the right there in the overlay from the movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas. And we're going to carve him today out of basswood. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to paint him up with two different videos. Uh, one for painting, one for carving. Today's the carving. And we're going to do that out of a piece of four inch, two by two American basswood. So four inches long, two inches by two inches. Nice and easy. To carve that, I'm going to show you how to do it with just a knife. This is a heavy rough out knife, and that's what I'm going to use on this one. However, I'm going to show you the benefits of having a detail knife while I do it. So on some of those details, we're going to use this. I'm going to show you how I do it with a rough out knife. And then I'll show you why it's nice having a detail knife, just as a, as a thing to teach and show, right? I'm also going to show you how I would use this tool here, a, a soft V or a U-gouge or something like that to make this section of the eyes e easier. So we'll use one tool to do it on the eyes like so, and I'll use the knife and I'll do two V-cuts like that and then round them off with the knife and show you how I would do that for both sides so you get a good idea of <clears throat> how to use a tool like this and how much of, how much nicer it would be to have. And let me know. And you'll still be able to do this whole carving with just knife if you so choose. So, for tools used, you could just do that just knife. And that's perfectly fine. And you'll get by and you'll be able to do it. Or if you want to and you have other tools, you get a detail knife and a number 11 or a number 9. I'm using in this case a soft V, uh, larger one. But, uh, yeah. Alrighty. So first thing you do is let's draw a center line down the top here to really help us stay even as we go, right? Now Oogie Boogie is really pretty simple figure here, right? He's rounded off the bottom and you can look at the overlay here on the side. He is <clears throat> not very uh, hard to really get the shape of. So we're going to come basically down and then the elbows are going to come in, and then we're going to come out from the elbow. And the same thing on the other side, try to keep it roughly the same. Elbow come in, and then a little bit more, and then out there. We could even things up as we need to, and the elbows would be like that for show. Actually, not here, right? And those are probably too high. We can adjust as we go. Because his head is going to be over here. About there. So yeah, I got those shoulders too high. This is the way you draw things out beforehand, right? Because if you just start making cuts, you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's terrible. That's the wrong spot. So. That. And that is much better. And someone got on to me recently and told me that I need to start providing measurements. So we're going to do that here in just a second. After I get things eyeballed in a bit. That's probably good. Right about there. We'll, we'll make those on even okay so to get some measurements right the head is going to be about two inches down for the top uh, about an inch and three quarters down yeah roughly an inch and three quarters down so one three quarter inches down for the the bottom of the head here the portion here on the hat it is that this that fold there is probably about halfway through so 50 percent of the way through you'll do a little jaunt over and we're going to adjust as we go if we need to and then the elbows here are about two and a quarter inches down two and a half inches down that side we can adjust it we'll eyeball it probably bring that one down a little bit more to match this one so about two and a half inches down or so all right okay and that was uh, five minutes of, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into it. 
And we're going to start with the uh, left side of the head here. And we're just going to start taking out some wood. I have uh, stropped my knife thoroughly before we started here. So make sure you've done that. If not, stop. Go strop your knife to the point you need it and then jump back in. And this is just a simple cut here, right? In at the side, sliding out at the top, curving up as we go. And that got a good bit. Take a little bit more towards the front to make that more even, like so. Now we're gonna do the same thing here, but we need to not go as far in because we gotta allow for that side of the sack head over here to hang over, right? Because Oogie Boogie is a sack full of bugs. The Boogeyman. My kids really love this movie. So does my wife. My wife and my kids are all big fans of Tim Burton. I have never been that big a fan of Tim Burton movies, but uh, they are, which is why I like doing character like this, because they enjoy them. So. All right, so <clears throat> for the bottom of the hat, we need to start setting that in a little bit, right? So let's go ahead and do a stop cut here. Going straight in, okay? And then we're going to carve right up to it. Yes, I did two. One slightly slanted from one side, then one the other side. That makes it easier. If you try to do the whole thing at once, just like the whole section, that's going to be harder. So you can do a little bit on this side, snap it out. A little bit on this side, snap it out. It makes it a little bit easier than trying to get a whole big piece of it, right? So... Same thing, but this time I do both of them before I snap it out, which is what kind of disguise it sometimes when you see me carving it. And you're like, did you do that in two passes? Yes, I did. All right, so to get the rest of this little flop on the hat here, we're going to go at an angle right here and start bringing that up like so. And then we can do the same thing over here on the back side. Getting that in, see? And then just right up to it and adjust as needed as you want to come around the other side there we go good start okay so we got that side that side obviously we got lower on this side than we did here so let's even that out Much better, much better. And these guys to be shaped a little bit differently. You see, see already, I've gone lower on the shoulders. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just gonna have a bigger head than this one, right? We're doing them a little bit differently. You can adjust things how you want to. All right, let's take this back off. We're gonna come and take about probably that much of the back off here and uh, start flattening it out. So I'm gonna start in the middle, in and then sweeping up, in and sweeping up. Nice and simple. There we go. So I'd like to take a moment to tell you too, uh, if this channel brings you any kind of value whatsoever, if you've enjoyed the videos so far, please take a moment to like this video. Liking the video will help me because it will generate more interest in the video, help the algorithms push it to more people, which will benefit me and benefit the channel. I really appreciate it. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you can subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell so that you get notifications whenever I do new carvings. It'll really help me out, and I really appreciate it. All righty. Let's do the bottom half of that same way. We're going to start in the middle, then push over to the bottom. The thing to remember this is <coughs> wood grain, right? If it starts tearing, adjust as needed. Pretty good, though. I'm not seeing any tearing, really. A little bit at the end there. I don't know why, but the song Remember Me from Coco is stuck in my head right now. <clears throat> I just want to keep singing, Remember Me. It's kids. This is what happens to you when you have kids, right? All these kid songs get stuck in your head. And I don't even remember the last time we saw Coco. So why is that one stuck in my head right now? Alrighty. 
taking off a little bit of those uh, saw marks there as well. I'm going to go ahead and do a little more of that saw mark removal right here in the back. And I can, because we're here. Why not? I've said this before, I'll say it again, and you're going to hear this a lot. <clears throat> saw marks, you want to remove those from every carving you do, because if you don't, they take paint and stain differently than a section of the wood that has had a knife touch it. I say that in every video because I'm never sure which video is the first video someone's watched from me. So I want to make sure everyone knows that, is aware of that, because it's one of those little things that you learn when carving, that if you don't hear it when you're new, it can cause some headache. So we got the back all cleaned up. Uh, generally formed shape for the uh, shoulders there. Let's go ahead and do the elbows on the left and right side. Okay, and real quick, let's take a brief message from our sponsor, me. Hey, if you want to help the channel out and get something in return, you can head over to Etsy and get one of these carving stickers of different varieties. You can put one on your water bottle, your tool tote, your carving space, wherever you want to put a sticker at. If you want to help out, you can. If you don't want to help out, don't even worry about it. <laughs> this is my carving sticker. That one's funny to me. At any rate, thanks so much. Now back to setting in our elbows here. Just V cutting and deepening that cut as I go. And that's how that elbow is going to be. Same thing on the other side here. Try to make sure it's even. That our lines are a hot mess. That's decent. But we can do better. That's getting better. Let's do a little bit more sheer angle here. I think that's looking better. Looking more even. Now we're going to take this bottom section off here. We don't want that to be too sharp. Right? So let's start to round that off some. We don't want it to be too much. We want it to kind of balloon out at the bottom, right? He's a sack. He's the boogeyman, and the boogeyman is a sack full of bugs. That's all that, the, that's all that Oogie Boogie is. Okay. That's doing pretty good. Up like that. Same thing again. Let's deepen right here as well. Just doing a V cut up to and deepening on either side here underneath that arm. See, I'm kind of rounding that over right there. I'll do the same thing over here. We up at an angle right here and then stop cutting right there. Same thing over here. Stop cutting. Start to give myself some more of that shape at the bottom where it can come out a little bit. Now let's worry about the front, right? We want to take off a good section here in the front, maybe about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more. Uh, take a look at the overlay. I'm going to keep the overlay up here. For those of you that are new, that overlay is, uh, <clears throat> that's the finished carving that we're working on now. Not the one I got sitting over there. That's the one that we're actually physically doing. And I like that because it gives you an idea of what we're going to wind up with as we're doing these cuts. So as you're seeing me do these cuts, that is exactly what you're going to get right there. And I think that just really helps. Plus it helps train you in another aspect. It helps show you how to get accustomed to using what we call a go by right when you look at an image and you carve from just an image we call it using a go by and if you get accustomed to using that overlay in such a manner it'll be easier for you to be looking up things on the internet or looking at pictures on instagram of other people's carvings and saying you know what i think i can just use this image and recreate this carving here myself and that is uh, that's part of the goal, right? To get you past me, past using tutorials. Keep me around for ideas and whatnot. 
then and around just because you like me because I'm a nice fellow like that but uh you don't need to be watching tutorials all the time your whole carving career right you need to be able to grow past that and that's the goal here I'm just taking off all these saw marks we'll redraw our lines where we need to as we need to our lines have helped us out for the most part so far because it's helped us keep even and get our arms elbows head cut in where we have a, a good idea of where things are at where they're going to be right there we go okay now for these elbows here right his arm is going to come down to a point so we can take out part of this along the back up to here and then we can take out a section like so to a point and then this side here and come down to a point and come up like that and then this side here same thing and down about like that to make that pointy arm and you can see the overlay on this guy right here right that's the general idea that we're going for there and then we'll start working on rounding the head after that so let's see here I'm gonna attack that. and rotate the carving as you need to to figure out the best way of doing this so I'm gonna work on the left arm I'm gonna do a stop cut right like so just gonna rock that knife in and then cut up to it And that gives a little bit of shape there. All right, now let's do this little section here. Pull that out as well. There we go. And then that hardness there, right? You can just kind of round that off this that's much much better starting to get shaped like the pointy arm that he has in the show all right so same thing on this side let's do the right like so and cut up to it There we go. We got it pretty even on the back side there for the elbows there. And uh, yeah, I defined that pretty well. Let's round back off a bit. Now see this right here is where you might use a detail knife. <clears throat> so with the rough out blade, you don't have to have a detail knife. You can just choke up on the knife like so when you're carving and uh, you can get a lot done you might use a detail blade for because the end of a rough out knife that's a detail blade if you've got a detail blade and i do this is where i would switch to one because it's a little bit easier and you don't have to choke up on a sharp knife to do something like that you know so if i was doing these cuts here or rounding off this edge i use a detail knife normally but like i said you don't have to if you've got just the rough out knife if that's all you got right now then that's fine do it with a rough out knife and just choke up on it but like i said you can do this as one knife i just want to take opportunities like that to show you what i might do if i were just uh doing this on my own not trying to show someone else and uh, i swap between knives very often all right so i'm gonna work on this right arm here i'm gonna sink in this indentation here uh, between the body and the inside of the elbow and so we're gonna go pretty deep on the inside of the arm and shallower on the outside so we're going pretty deep right here right Push the knife in real good, and you see how we're at an angle there, where the tip of the blade is in deeper where the elbow is, and shallower where the tip of the hand is, right? Like so. So we're just going to pull it back out. I'm going to do the same thing from the other direction, going deep at the corner of the elbow, and leaving it shallower on the outside edge. And if we've, 
if you've done other carvings with me, you might notice that same maneuver from other elbows we've done, right? It's the same kind of thing. Now that's going to allow us to carve into and get deeper as we go to the elbow and then be shallower at the upper part of the arm and shallower here at the elbow. So we're going to make that cut right this. We're going to just go right in, nice and deep, right? And you see how that angle we went in? Look at that chip, right? See how it's thicker there at that point? That's all we're doing. We're going to do the same thing on this other side. And you don't have to do that one pass, right? That worked out really well that it came out in one chip. That is not how it normally happens. Don't feel like you have to do the same thing. Do two passes, do three passes, do whatever it takes to get it done right. I want to make sure that corner there lines up the same way. Rotating carvings upside down, right side up to get an idea of what you're doing and where you're doing stuff is absolutely beneficial. Don't hesitate to do that. Same thing, nice and deep. And then again, like so. Then we're gonna carve that chip out like that. Now that's looking pretty good, but that comes in a bit farther. We need to adjust how his hand is because Adjust this side here down more. All right, we'll open that up a little bit more. Take a look. Okay, maybe adjust this one a bit as well. And then we'll adjust this a little bit. I'm starting to bring it in. I'm trying to get it even, you know. And I'm looking, and I'm working back and forth to figure out how to get it more even, like there. Because this guy is not going to have real sharp pointed ends, but it's like uh, the corners of a bag, right? <clears throat> he's like a big bag. And like, take a look at the overlay, you'll see like a cartoon version of him here. And he's like a big bag, a sack. Right? And so we're going to just make the bottom of the sack kind of rounded because we don't need to go all that into depth like making the thing. But having those corners of the sack come down like that would be just fine. Okay, so back to the regular overlay. All right, so next we're going to work on rounding off the head a bit, right? We want to round it in on the top and bottom. So coming in this way, and then we round this side over, this side over, and start to shape that a bit better so let's do that so this is just a lot of wood to take off we're just gonna be taking it off don't forget to um come follow me on instagram on facebook or whatever get involved in the car carving community getting involved in the carving community is such a benefit for someone who's new at carving to see other folks who are new at carving Doing similar carvings, same skill level, is amazing and it's inspiring. And it is one of the things that helped push me from uh, where I was to where I am now. Seeing other folks in the same struggle, learning the same things, trying the same things. And then not only that, but seeing other people carve things, getting ideas for things to carve is so enjoyable. You get inspired. So do that. Get over on Instagram follow me take a look at the people who are following my posts and liking my posts and follow them and they're going to follow you back and you're going to get involved in the carving community it's a wonderful thing do the same thing on facebook it's all kind of carving groups don't just carve by yourself carving is such a a community kind of thing the carving community is a, a wonderful resource and you should be using it not ignoring it so please don't just ignore it get involved And we're just taking stuff off. My anal retentiveness keeps me from leaving too many <laughs> wood chips lying about. I've got to fix it. I need to get better at just leaving it. That's why I built this desk like this, is that it catches all these carvings. I don't have to think about them. And yet I still do. cut action if you're cutting in grain a 
paring cut like this, keeping that, that left thumb down here out of the way, is so beneficial. It gives you so much more leverage for a cut. And you can really get stuff off far easier than you can with a regular push cut. And I was thinking, like I said, not right there. That dark spot, that is harder to carve through. So that's a spot where a lot of folks would fight to get that out. But doing a paring cut through there is significantly easier than trying to fight it on your own. So keep that in mind as an option you have in your carver's tool bag. And grade is also going to show you exactly where your knife is dull. Because you'll be able to see when looking at it, like, see I got a little tearing there, right? That happened in about the middle of the blade. So I know when I was dropping, I need to concentrate a little bit more next time when I was dropping on that middle section of the blade. Because it's not quite as sharp as the rest of it is, apparently. And while that problem might not show up when I'm carving anywhere else in this carving, it did show up right here on the end grain. This is the tough stuff, right? This is the hard stuff to carve through. That's where it's going to show up. All righty. Let's take that out in that direction. catches. We've almost gotten it gone though, so it's not going to cause too much of an issue for us. And we don't have to try to get it gone, but alrighty. Much better. Starting to come along. Right? So stop every now and then to take a look at what you've done and where you're at. And that's Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well indeed. So let's curve that a bit more here. And then we're going to be looking at putting in our chin a bit, right? He need a sack, but he's got a bit of a definition between the face and the rest of his body. Not a whole lot. So we're going to put a little bit in through here. And this is just a rough guide for me. I want to come down to the front and back up high around the top of the shoulders. You see? So, nothing crazy. And then we're going to define this a bit more. I'm going to bring it down more to a point, like so. And up to there. That'll probably be good. Yeah, that'll be just fine. Let's do that. Okay. So, the bottom of the chin here, we're going to do V cuts, right? A V cut like this, and then coming up to it. Redo that a little bit. It didn't pop out. Same thing here. V cut, V cut. And then right across the middle, and right up to it. Right here along the shoulders, same thing. Just V cutting along to find that, and we will round that off a bit more as we go. But for right now, we're just setting a line. And remember, he's a big sack of bugs. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. He's a big sack of bugs. Who's gonna notice a little lopsided on one side versus the other? No one. <laughs> Who's gonna know? Who's gonna know? And that about right here should do it. Okay. So we've got that general shape to that head, right? I'm gonna flip it around. 
and going to the side, I'm just going to round that off like so. And this is not a spot where you could use a detail knife, right? It might be a little bit easier for you. I'm doing just fine with this rough out knife. But <clears throat> if you want to do more complicated carvings, you're going to have to get more tools eventually. So it's something to keep in mind that, hey, having other tools is a nice thing. And again, I don't know your situation. You may be buying tools already. You may be not be buying tools. I don't know. Do what you can afford. Don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm one of those guys that, as you can see, collects tools. I like having tools. I like having lots of tools. And I like when I see a new tool, I get a new tool. I've actually got a Mora knife on the way from Treeline that I just ordered. Because seeing in videos and whatnot, Charles Banks use his to great effect really made me interested in trying one. There's a lot of benefits to having a, uh, an upsweep blade versus just having a straight knife. And I'm thinking more and more lately that I need to do a video on that to really showcase my thoughts on that because I see a lot of newer carvers that are just very much against upsweep blades and not understanding the benefits that they can provide to them. And I think that uh, pointing that out would be great. Okay, so let's do the rest of that hat there. That is looking a lot better than rounded off the way we just did that. So let's put a larger cut in here to make this at a more sheer angle, right? Getting about down to there. And then we'll come right into it like so. And you notice I use this left thumb here. I'm not pushing in towards my hand. I use the left thumb to pull that in, okay? That's why that maneuver was safe. So if you're like, oh my God, he's cutting towards himself again. What is this guy doing here? The left thumb here, that's what's doing the work. The right hand is just holding the knife. And I just pull in, pull in, okay? That's all I'm doing. So I'm not in danger of, ah, how, how do you cut yourself with that left thumb? That'd be real hard to really get it in there, you follow? So that's what I was doing there. Don't be frightened for me. I feel like I do know what I'm doing at this point, but never know. Some folks will say I don't know what I'm doing because I'm not wearing a carving glove. I'm just wearing this finger wrap. And I do understand their concerns. All righty. There's the other side. Well, that's looking a lot better. But we got a little more to clean up right here. And again, here, the same maneuver. I was using that left thumb there to power that knife blade as I went through there, you know. All right, so the wood grain here is traveling like in this direction. See that? So I can't do a pear cut here because I'm in danger of tearing that wood. So in this section here, if I want to round this edge off, I need to come from the bottom up. So if you're wondering, why did he hesitate there for a second? I was thinking about that. My brain was doing calculations. Is that going to work out? No, that's not going to work out, Johnny. Now, on this one here, same thing. I need to come from the bottom up. So this one, I'm going to do a parry action to the same direction. Like so. And then undercut that a little bit. See if we can get a little bit of that. It's hard to cut in that direction because it's against the grain, like I said. But I want to round that off somewhat. And yeah, that actually looks pretty good, I think. That corner is coming out too far, though, and we just now saw that. Notice that we could have got that hat piece in. It's okay, because we can fix it now. There we go. I do want to define that a bit more as it goes up. So we 
bring up here a little bit more. There we go. Okay, we're making good progress. We're going to go big, Oogie Boogie here. Let's round off the bottom section here a bit. Right? Because he had a big meat sack, so he's not going to be sitting completely flat. The edges of that sack will kind of fan out a bit. Okay, I think we're about to start working on the face for Oogie Boogie here. And then we'll work on the detail. Because the detail is going to be, look at the overlay, that line down the top. And uh, those cross hatches. So that's another tool we can use, is a V-tool. That would make this a lot easier. So I'll show you how to use a V-tool to do that. And also how to use a knife to do that. So, this is just going to be a line, right? So for the arm going to come down the arm, but then it's going to go with the arm because the arm is facing forward to that point here, okay? And then it's going to come down the body here, it's going to go up here, down the tip of this, and all the way around. You need a sack that's been sewn up like a burlap sack, right? Same thing, all the way down, and we curve around the hand. I need to clean that up. Look how dirty that is. I didn't even notice that. Let's round that off a bit more. And then we do the same thing down right here. Okay? Now, you can use a big rough out knife to do this. It's not as easy, right? Because all we're doing is we're doing a V cut. So I'm going to do a channel angled slightly from one direction and then we do the same thing another channel angled slightly in the other direction okay and then we pull that chip out right so you got that and then let's smooth that out a little bit like so and then you just do little V cuts here for the stitches like this. Same thing over here, match them up. And that's all we're doing. It is significantly easier if you have a V tool because with the V tool, you can just carve that line really quick, like so, all the way down to the tip of the hand. And then one, two, three. Putting those in. So much easier than just using a knife. You see? So if you don't have a V tool, honestly the first tool I suggest people to pick up past a knife is a V tool. And most carvers are going to agree. Some might say that maybe you should get a... Uh, gouge <laughs> some carvers will jokingly tell you the first tool you should get is a pencil <laughs> uh, those people are just difficult they like being difficult it's fun for them <laughs> all righty so yeah a v tool a good v tool to start with is that number 15 or number 12 if you're going with file this is number 12 um, number 15 works as well. And you can get a 15. That's a 15 right here. And they're both good size. 
the 15 gives you more range because like even if I'm using the 15, it's the same as using the 12. It's just that it's deeper, right? But I don't have to use all that depth. I could use this 15 and just barely go in. And then what do I get here? The same line as I got on the other side here. It's just that I've got a tool that would allow me to go much deeper if I see the need or want to go deeper. So having this larger number, this larger V tool, deeper 15, because you can get a little bitty 15 as well. I've got another one here, right? Now that's you. This is a number 12, okay? And this is a number 12. Both of these are number 12 V tools, but you can see they are significantly smaller, right? So they come in millimeter size for the width. Number 15 is the, or number 12 is the scope of the V, right? The shape of the V itself. So I'm referring to number 12, I'm referring to the shape of the V. And I believe this is a two millimeter V. And I believe this is a five millimeter V. So that's how wide the V channel opening is. And this is a 15, which is a deeper channel than this, but it's a, a wider one. So it's larger. So that's a little lesson on V tools. A bonus today. I need to do a video talking about gouges and V tools and the difference between them. I haven't done that yet. I'm trying to think of the right way to do it and include all the information so I answer as many questions as possible because it's not something that I'm gonna wanna keep doing a video on. So I wanna make one that's very well thought out, well done, that I can reference when people ask questions and not have to worry about steering anyone wrong. That's the biggest thing when I'm doing a tutorial or something like that is I don't wanna steer people wrong. You know, I don't want to say something and have it just be the wrong thing. And then all of a sudden I have discouraged this person from wood carving because they try to do something and they think to themselves, Johnny said this would work and it's just not working for me. So I guess I'll just give up. That'd just be terrible. It's such a fun hobby. I don't want anyone giving up on it because I made a mistake. But I think about things like that and you don't have to. Okay, so those lines are great. Those lines are great. Right across the top of the head, that's looking fantastic. Oh, you missed a little spot in there, right? So let's use this other V to get right up in there. I'll use that detail knife to clip that out. So there we go. So, like I said, you can use just a knife to do this. I've shown you the other tools because I want you to see what all the options are. So for our face, or Oogie Boogie, we're gonna take and do this. All right, I had to stop for a second. The kids need something. Oogie has a very distinctive eye shape, right? So you can see the eye shape right here, right? You get a really wide mouth that goes up past the eyes on the left and right, and then little hash marks done with a V because it's like a sewn shut but it's coming loose right for the mouth so we're going to do these kind of teardrop shaped inward eyes like that Trying to get the shape right, but it's hard. Is that right? No. And take your time when you're drawing this. You can see I'm having to redo things too. Don't feel bad if you're having to redo your drawing. And if one eye is a little bit differently shaped than the other, it's probably not going to matter that much. When I was a little bigger, it kind of gives a bit more expression to him, you know? So we'll just do that right there. We're not gonna draw the hashes on the mouth. We're just gonna draw the mouth out and then add the hashes in. So there's our face. 
go ahead and carve that out. Now I'm going to use a detail knife, but you can absolutely just use this bigger one, just choke up further up on the handle. I just prefer using this. And it's not a thinner blade, it's a shorter blade, okay? So like if you look at the tip of it here, look at the tip of that knife. It is not really very, it's a little bit thinner, just a tiny fraction, but it doesn't matter. Here. To make folks happy, I'll use the rough out knife. Now people say, you didn't show me how to use a bigger knife on that. And I just want to use one knife. Well, here you go. Now notice what I'm doing here, right? I'm rotating the carving and keeping the knife blade still. That is just a precaution that I've gotten into. I cut myself once by pushing and then slicing like that, right? So I prefer to do things that will avoid me cutting myself. I'm not pushing hard on this carving. I'm just kind of rotating it and pulling it along. I pivot the blade with the left hand while I do that. There you go. This is the part that people would say, I didn't see how you did that with a, with a rough up blade, so I don't know how to do that little section in the mouth you don't take out big chunks is the is the ticket right and you don't have to go very deep just enough to define the outline of the mouth not as crazy as you think you're not as involved as people think either but you don't know what you don't know We got that mouth general shape in right same thing in the eyes and I'm trying to keep it in the knife straight in kind of you don't have to bring it in at an angle at all really if you want to a slight angle in towards the middle of the eye maybe I'd lean that direction more so than angling out you want to be able to remove the intersection of the eye right the eye sunk into the head a little bit so if you remove if you have that angle going in slightly it's easier than making it like what concave concave or convex I always forget and then we'll just take out little chips around the outer edges you can leave it raised the same height in the middle Take those chips along the outer edges that gives all the, the illusion of the shape of the eye that you need you know there we go use that brush to knock away any fuzzies looking pretty good Rotate your carving. If you don't like the way the, the knife is cutting, just say, okay, let's go a different direction. That didn't, I don't like the way that's going. Let's try it from this direction. It's not a problem. And carving is not something we're usually doing in front of people too, so you can usually just stop and rethink something. Don't get in a hurry. Don't get in a rush. Take your time. Especially to keep yourself from getting hurt. Okay. So now, <clears throat> look, look at the overlay here. And you can see we need to put little indentations right around the mouth. You can absolutely do this with just a knife. Like that, just little V-cuts. Okay? Just like so. Not that hard. If you've got a V-tool, you can use the V-tool and do it a little bit easier. Because it's just in, in, so super simple, whichever way you want to do it. With a V-tool, you notice that you might have to do a little cleanup that you wouldn't do with a knife. 
So I'm going to do this with a V-tool so you can see the cleanup too. The knife is probably the easier way to do this on the mouth, right? The V-tool is probably the harder way, so I'll show you. So the cleanup I'm talking about is all these little fuzzies that are right up in there now, right? With, with our two one we did here with the knife, you can see it looks pretty clean. But with the V-tool, we got that little... Well, bits where it's messed up the inside of the mouth. Much better. Okay. So that's, uh, that done? No, it's not. We need to do the eyes. Okay, this part I was talking about, how I'm gonna show you two different ways to do the eyes. One, you can do it with a knife, and we're gonna create a brow ridge right here, right? So you can do this with a knife by getting right here above the eye, enough for an eyebrow, right? You wanna have an eyebrow right here, so use this to point. From an eyebrow right through here, right? So we can use a knife and do some V channels. Like this, like so, okay. And then kind of round it out. So that's one brow ridge, right? Just a knife. The other option is if you have a a U gouge, a deep 11 or a nine, or this is a soft V. You can just use this as well. And just do it a little bit easier. Like so. And just carve that guy up with this. I'll tell you this, it is amazing when you get these extra tools what all you'll use them for. So that's how to do it with that tool. And I'm just gonna smooth this out here a bit more. And I think he's looking Pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and clean up this front here a little bit. Just to smooth out these spots that are a little rough. And take your time to go back through your carving wherever you think you might need to or want to. Take out any rough lines that you don't like the look of. To make sure you get all those saw marks, right? If you think, uh, like, oh, like, right here, that doesn't come to a point quite enough. Let's fix that, right? And that point's a little too sheer. Let's fix that. We don't want it to be too sharp. Right? But I think that uh, he's looking fantastic. This back here is a bit too hard. The line there. And I don't like how thick that is. So we might... Try to thin it out a little bit, okay? But all of that aside, this carving is done. So, what I'll do now is I'm gonna take him over to the sink and I'm gonna put him under the water for about two, three minutes and give him a good brushing with a toothbrush just to clean him up and uh, be back in momentarily. Okay, and there he is, two, three minutes under the water and look how it really brings the wood grain to life. That will do more for cleaning up your carvings and making them uh, the cuts look better than anything else, really. So two, three minutes under the sink, scrub them down. That's a great move. So I've got two guys, and I'm going to finish them up. And I'll have another video posted today as well, same time, and you'll be able to see how I finish these guys. One of them is going to get a paint job, and that's probably going to be this guy. And this guy, I'm going to finish with uh, Danish oil and some black acrylic paint for the eyes. And... Uh, and this is how they turned out with finishing. On the right, we've got acrylic paints and the antiquing solution. On the left, we've got black walnut Danish oil. So if you want to see a video on how to do that, 
you can watch the next video on painting. And uh, outside of that, I hope that you guys have enjoyed making Oogie Boogie with me. He had a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to carve, a lot of fun to paint. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Tell me how I'm doing. Tell me how I did. If you want to, come follow me on Instagram, connect with the wood carving community, and head over to Etsy and buy a sticker if you'd like to. Other than that, thanks for sticking around to the end. Don't forget to be awesome, and I'll see you next time. Have fun. Now, at this point, you should be clicking the links on the screen. Go to one of the other videos, watch the painting video right here, or watch some other video on the channel.